<laughs> so, hey, my name is Rachel, and I've uh, been reading Imitation and Gender and Subordination by Judith Butler. <laughs> she talks a lot about uh, sexuality and how we are encaptured by our identities. And she's really interesting because she believes that we need to regulate homophobia to to avoid violence because she has personal experience with such normative violence that is meaning like you are this you say that you are this as far as like being homosexual and these are the repercussions of violent people like But can sexuality even remain sexuality once it submits to a criterion of transparency and disclosure, or does it perhaps cease to be sexuality precisely when this imbalance of full explicitness is achieved? It is uh, one of her quotes, and it's very interesting because, I mean, once you claim sexuality, is it even yours anymore? I, I feel like that's, like, what her question might be, and... When it's full explicitness, like fully getting it out there and saying what it is that you wanted to say, like, well, transparency, you know, to see right through. Disclosure is to kind of act upon a new or secret information that's now known. She's saying that sexual identity should be basically a secret something that we see right through, something that we don't think about when we're becoming friends with someone or starting to get to know you. It's something that we should kind of just, like, see right past. Acknowledge, of course, not totally deny, but to see past through and the conscious eye who would reveal its sexuality is perhaps the last to know the meaning of what it means. And I think she's saying that, like, whenever you're coming out, out of the closet, saying, you don't actually know who you are any more than you thought you did before, but you thought that you had to come out to your society or to your community, to whoever it is that you're coming out to, that, hey, I, uh, I know who I am now. Everything's figured out. But as humans, we're all ever-changing all the time. And it's a never-ending story. And it's something us humans try to do. It's try to figure ourselves out and to go and find our true selves when we don't really even know what that is. We don't even know who we are at the end of the day. And yeah, she says she's lesbian. She's totally into chicks, and that's awesome. But she just, for the future generations and those who are going to come out of the closet, she wants us to change our everyday perspective. The guys wearing the dresses on the buses, walking around campus, hanging out at the grocery store, we should all just think like, hey, that's great, good for you. Like, I'm happy that you are being who you want to be because that's that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm going to be. But she says that coming out is an act of libera- liberation and freedom. And But if we don't even know what we truly are, like how can we actually ever experience the freedom that we were hoping for? Um, it's a cynical perspective, but it does not always have like a positive underlining um, meaning. And it seems uncontroversial. Well, and what's interesting is that it's not that she's telling people to not be homosexual, but how cynical she is about being homosexual. It's like, I feel like most people that are homosexual are like, yeah, let's all be out there and tell the world that this is who we are and we're going to be more accepting or accepted and we're going to be free and have like this sense of liberation but butler's over here like nope don't even do that don't even conform to these normalities you are not going to be accepted you are not going to be loved you are still going to have all these issues you still don't know who you are and like that is so cynical like
Throughout this article, I believe that Judith Butler has a lot of controversial things to say. And I'm not really sure if I agree or disagree with any of the things that she does say because I still am very convinced that whoever you are, if you come out of the closet, you will find some sort of liberation because it all really depends on the most personal experiences that you have gone through with your homosexuality. And I agree that there are a lot of people who do suffer every day from their sexual orientation. But I truly respect Butler and her want for our society to come out into a more positive light and to shed that light on homosexuals because they're doing nothing wrong. They're trying to find themselves and they're being happy. They're doing who they want to do and to be who they want to be. And so I do appreciate her and I find her her theories and whatnot or critiques to be completely interesting and um, unique. So keep on keeping on, Judas Butler.